Welcome to A British Audio File and a new episode where I'm looking at myths and misconceptions in hi-fi. I wish I'd come up with an easier to say title. In this episode, I'm going to look at amplifier power. Before I get started, just um, a massive thank you for the people out there who support this channel. It's grown immensely over the last couple of weeks um, and I'm kind of humbled and extremely grateful for the support out there, which has been wholeheartedly positive. There's been a little criticism about the poor sound quality in recent videos and I apologise, it was problems I was having with a mic running through an adapter. New microphone, hopefully the sound quality is much better on this video. So amplifier power. There's a lot of conflicting advice out there from the experts. Some people will tell you you only need 20-25 watts and that's more than sufficient and others say you need hundreds of watts because it's all about headroom. So what's the reality of this? Well, let's run the numbers. Now I'm gonna look at the factors that actually influence how much power you need from your amplifier in order to adequately drive your speakers in your environment. And to kind of make this relatable, I'm going to use myself as an example and the setup behind me. How much power do I actually use? But I'm also going to take a worst case scenario. So I've invented a fictitious uh, friend of mine named Max, who basically takes everything to the extreme. So it seems like an app name. And how much power would you need in the worst case scenario? Now, before I get into that, we need to have a little bit of an understanding about sound pressure measured in decibels and its relationship to power. So decibels is a relative scale. What do I mean by that? Well, it means that zero decibels doesn't actually mean zero sound. Zero decibels relates to a sound pressure of 20 micro pascals, which is determined by broadcasters many moons ago as the lowest detectable sound to the human ear. And that's the reference point and everything's measured against that. Now there's some numbers to hold in mind here. Doubling the power of your amplifier doesn't mean a doubling in your perception in the loudness of the sound. So what I'm saying is double power doesn't relate to double loudness. Double power relates to an increase in the decibels of 3 dB. You need an increase of 10 dB before you perceive the sound as being twice as loud. In order to get an increase of 10 dB, you don't need twice the power, you need 10 times the power. And that's why decibels is measured in a logarithmic scale. So as you go from, say, an all low, quiet listening level of 60 dBs to 70 dBs, you need 10 times the power. If you're increasing your listening level to 80 dBs, then uh, you'll need 10 times the power again, and so on. If you're listening at 90 dBs and above, you're probably suffering hearing damage and you should probably turn the sound down. So we'll look at all the factors that influence that next. Now, one of the specifications you need to take a look at is the sensitivity rating of your speaker. Now, what that tells you is how efficient your speaker is at taking power measured in watts and converting it into sound pressure measured in decibels. So if you take the Pro Apps behind me, they have a relatively low sensitivity rating of 85 decibels per watt. Something like a Klipsch Heresy, which is a highly efficient speaker, will have an efficiency rating of 95 decibels per watt. So Eclipse Heresy will play twice as loud as the Pro Axe behind me for any given uh, wattage. Another specification to pay attention to is the impedance of your speaker. Now the impedance of your speaker is a combination of its capacitance, its inductance and its resistance. That is essentially the load that your speaker places upon your amplifier. Now the load of your speaker will vary depending on the frequency being played. As the frequency changes, the load changes. Now the products behind me have an impedance of 8 ohms, but at certain frequencies they'll drop down to 4 ohms. 
as the impedance halves, the demands of the amplifier have to double in terms of power. So half the impedance means double the power. Proax are relatively easy speakers to drive. There are speakers out there that drop down to two ohms. That's what they mean when they say a, a speaker is particularly difficult to drive. So for speakers dropping down from to two ohms from eight ohms, that's requiring four times the power at those particular frequencies. The distance you are away from your speakers also has some bearing on the amount of power you need. Now, if you look at the specification of your speakers, they'll have a sensitivity rating into a given impedance at a distance of one meter. As you move further away from your speakers, the sound pressure drops off. Now, if you're listening in a free field environment, that's where you've got zero reflections, and essentially that's only possible in an anechoic chamber. As you double the distance, the decibel rating drops by six dBs. So at one meter, whatever the decibel rating is, it would drop by six dBs at two meters, another six dBs at four meters, and another six dBs at eight meters. But that's, as I say, if you were listening with zero reflections, we listen in rooms where the sound energy is trapped and there's an awful lot of energy reflected back in. So effectively, I think you could take a rule of thumb of halving those uh, numbers to three dBs at those points in any kind of modern living room, even larger living rooms. Right, so we're now in a position where we can start looking at how much power I actually need for my scenario and also for my mate max based on our listening levels. So I typically listen at an average listening level of around 75 decibels. The Proact Response 1SEs behind me have a sensitivity rating of 85 decibels for one watt. So at 75 decibels, they're only requiring 0.1 watts to power them. But that's based on an impedance of eight ohms. The impedance drops at certain frequencies to four ohms. So that's a doubling of power. They're up to 0.2 watts. I also don't listen one meter away from this, from my speakers. I listen at two meters away. So if we take another three dB drop at that point, again, that's a doubling of power to 0.4 watts. That's my scenario at average listening levels. What about my mate Max? He's also got inefficient speakers at 85 dB. His listening levels are at 85 decibels average. If you're listening above that level, you're risking kind of hearing damage. Have a look at the recent Audioholics um, uh, video that they posted on safe listening levels. So let's take, he likes to rock out, let's say, he listens at 85 decibels as an average listening level. He's also got, so he's speakers that produce 85 decibels per watt. He's using that one watt, but he's picked a pair of speakers that are really difficult to drive. They drop down to two ohms. There aren't many modern day speakers that drop down much below that. So I think that's pretty much kind of the worst case scenario. So two ohms, from eight ohms, that's four times the power. He's up to four watts now. He's got a massive room and he listens eight meters away. So three dBs down, we said, we said it's anechoically six and we were going with a rating of three in a room. So three dBs at, down at two, another three at four, another three at uh, eight. Well, let's call it another 10 dBs just to round out the maths. So at his distances, the drop is another 10 dBs. He's up to 40 watts of power in terms of what he needs. And that's eight meters away, inefficient speakers that are particularly hard to drive. You'll hear people talk about headroom and how important it is to have headroom when it comes to amplifier power. So what do they mean by that? Well, 
Music by its very nature is dynamic. It's not one tone produced at one level. It has peaks and troughs. Now you may have heard of something called the loudness wars. That's where modern music is effectively compressed so those peaks and troughs are less pronounced. Typical modern piece may have uh, a uh, dynamic range of plus or minus five dBs, but older recordings will have greater dynamics and some classical recordings in particular are very dynamic in their nature and those peaks and troughs may be plus or minus 10 dBs. So let's run those numbers again based on myself and Max. If you recall, I was using 0.4 watts as an average listening level, but let's say I'm listening to a particularly challenging classical piece which requires a lot more power in those instances. And it has plus 10 dB peaks. Well, plus 10 dB is 10 times the power. So at those peak output levels, I'm going to need four watts, not 0.4 watts. Max was using 40 watts and he's listening to the same piece of music. So again, he's gonna need 10 times the power to deal with those plus 10 dB peaks. And he's up to 400 watts. You can see how the two scenarios are completely different in terms of our power usage. The last thing I'd like to say about headroom is that it's beneficial to have a little bit more watts than you actually need. It's a bit like driving on a motorway highway, depending on which part of the world you're watching this. If you're driving at 70 miles an hour and you're in a 1.4 litre petrol that's revving its nuts off at three and a half thousand revs, it's having to work pretty hard and eventually it will get quite tiring. If you've got a three litre V8 that's purring along at 1500 revs, it's hardly breaking a sweat. I listen at moderate levels, relatively close up. I don't like to annoy the neighbours, so I could probably get away with 20 watt amplifier. My mate Max, who's rocking out in a big room, inefficient speakers that are hard to drive, may well need seven, 800 watts. Um, but that is, like I say, a very extreme example. How many watts do you need? Maybe you should run the numbers and do this exercise. I know there's more to um, amplifier power than just what I've looked at here and I wanted to keep this relatively straightforward. There's things you can look at with regards to slew rate and power factors, etc., etc. but um, just wanted to keep this as accessible as I possibly could. Hopefully you've got something from this video. If you have, please hit that like button, please share it, and if you haven't subscribed already and you like my approach to Hi-Fi, please consider doing that as well. Like I say, it's really grown quite remarkably over the last couple of weeks and um, I'd really like to see where we could take this. So thank you for watching, but for today, for now, a British audiophile signing off.